Hello everyone, my name is Prab Nair and I'm working as a Chief Instructor at InfoSec Training. Hey guys, welcome to the session on Coffee with Prab and we have Ms. Kavita Prabhakar and she already did one session uh, uh, with us uh, how to conduct ISO 27001 uh, a practical approach new th no theory and all that completely pure based on the templates and um, based on the demand based on the need based on the requirement she's back uh, on the based on the request from the subscribers but we want Kavita ma'am again on the next topic because and it was a great, great hit, uh, Ms. Kavita, you know, the video that we have covered last. I was not expecting that we get a great response like that, but I think it was a really a great response we got on the video. A lot of comments was there. I'm sure a lot of people have reached out to you uh, after that particular video. And uh, so we are back again uh, to uh, with another session where, you know, she going to explain about what is third party risk assessment, vendor risk assessment, why we need that, and most important is how to conduct this particular assessment. So over to you, Kavita. So Kavita, how are you feeling? Yeah, feeling very great. Again, connecting back with you, Prabhu. It's really a privilege again connecting back with you and conducting another session. So happy and excited uh, for that and new I'm, topic. And and I'm also very excited and I'm I'm sure I had a great learning from this particular session because I'm also having a lot of doubts on vendor risk assessment with like other subscribers. And I really appreciate and thanking thank thanks for taking out the time for this particular schedule. I know. Weekend is something which is a house activities and, you know, personal commitments are there. Taking out the time from that and doing this session, it's really uh, kudos to you. And thanks for giving back to society. Thank you. Thank you so much. Prof. As always, I'm super excited again connecting back to you. So Thank let's you. make this uh, session very interactive. And yes. See how we can uh, contribute to our uh, members that they can make a best use of this uh, session. Thanks. Sure, sure, sure. So Kavita, uh, before going to start this session, you know, uh, there is always a doubt people have regarding a risk vendor assessment, third party assessment and all that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So could you please uh, spend some area on this section about what is what is third party risk assessment in a layman term? What is vendor risk assessment and why should we go for it? Because it involves a lot of cost. Right, right. A huge cost which is involved in uh, vendor risk assessment or third party risk assessment. So if I have to say, I just put it in a single, uh, so, sorry, in a very, very layman term. Uh, so I have a house which has been secured inside. I put a camera inside my house. I keep it monitoring every day, uh, 24 by 7, I keep monitoring. I have a, a pet at home who keeps uh, helping me out if anybody is entering them. So these are the measures which I take uh, so if uh, what what exactly what somebody is entering a uh, security uh, uh, a third person is entering to my house we don't know how do we secure them so if i stay in an individual house i don't know how do i protect them from entering the house right? there should be some measures which has to be taken so inside the house we see that the electric uh, wiring is done plumbing is done everything we ensure that uh, everything is secure okay so if it is an electric electric work we, we ensure that the wiring is done earthing is done properly all these measures which we take what if something is external threat which is coming inside the organization what if an external uh, threat which is entering our house we don't know how how it has to be deep, how it has to be mitigated how, how it has to be handled so cool. this is all about a third person entering your house or an organization how do you manage it how do you mitigate it how do you Treat the risk which is all uh, which has hit your organization. How do you treat it? This is in a layman term. External okay. threat which is hitting your organization, managing it, mitigating it. Either you want to transfer it to somebody. These are the uh, things which you need to consider when you will uh, do a third party risk. <clears throat> it's oh, third that, party. Yeah. Third party by name it implies that. So we we also have a first party, second party. Like, do we have systems? First party, second party, third party. Yes, yes, we have third party and own party. So okay. it says that first party is always, uh, it's considered as uh, the organization. Mm -hmm. And the third party is somebody from the external team. Okay. Who, uh, not part of the organization. He's somebody who is external, who will be supporting us to run mm -hmm. our day-to-day -day activity uh, mm -hmm. smoothly, mm -hmm. uh, ensuring all the security measures from their organization also it is taken care. And we mm -hmm. also support them. It's a like collaboration activity which happens. And again, there is something called as fourth party. Hmm. Third party is third party. Hmm. It's called as fourth party. 
So how everybody put together, we work as a collaborative uh, or collaboration is very much required in this, and we were work in a collaboration model. Okay, that's that's great. So why, like as I said, you know, there are mm -hmm. possible threats. We can basically, you know, will be there from external. Uh, uh, perspective and that's why we do risk assessment just to make sure you know whoever coming to the house mm -hmm. you know it is basically creating a safe environment for the house right exactly same exactly. same like we, we basically trained our kids you know don't talk mm -hmm. to strangers you know don't accept any items because you already trained them on their activities exactly just exactly. to make sure there's a new threat and you know don't share our address with anyone and if someone is coming when, when they're knocking a door they press they press the yeah. bell you ask them series of questions just to make sure it is basically safe for us, right? So same like when we onboarding any vendors in the organization, we do assessment. So that's a very good analogy. I'm going to use this analogy in my training also in consulting. Thank you so much. So, <laughs> so we usually educate our uh, kids saying that if a stranger uh, is giving you a chocolate, please do not uh, accept it. Uh, this is uh, also uh, same uh, thing. If a stranger is sending you something, stranger is talking you something, asking you out to pull out some information from your organization, please uh, try to avoid that. Please do not share any information. So this is exactly. also basically how the, uh, how secure you want to try to keep <clears throat> your home. The same way you will have to try to keep your organization also safe and secure. True. So question is how to conduct vendor risk assessment? Do we follow any standard? Like example, I join one company. I have a zero idea about vendor risk assessment. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how to start from scratch? First thing I just want to uh, tell, like what would be the uh, third party uh, vendors? Like hmm. example of, uh, so for the better visibility, I would like to give some examples. Like hmm. uh, vendors might be your uh, outsourcing application. You would have outsourced to some organization wherein you will have, uh, you don't have in-house specialists for hmm. uh, developing an application. So you would have outsourced an application team where it will be connecting with your internal server. They, okay. they are called as outsourced uh, uh, team. Again, a finance team, which you do not have in-house, you would have outsourced the finance team. A huge data of sensitive data is being handled by your external team. Hmm. Okay. It might not be a technical, it might be a non-technical team who will be supporting you, it might be a contracting staff, or it might be a housekeeping staff also. So, for okay. example, a housekeeping staff has been uh, cleaning the data center. He might not know that which plug to plug in and which plug to plug out. His mm. activities, there is a dust just behind the plug or just below the plug. He unplugs it, cleans it, and then puts it back. He doesn't know mm. what is happening. So mm. these are the things which we need to educate into uh, our staff as well and the external staff as well. These okay. are some of the examples. So uh, based on this, then I will uh, let you know how it has to be from scratch, how it has to be deployed or how it has to be implemented. Uh, the risk assessment has to be, vendor risk ass assessment has to be conducted in the organization. So first, uh, before uh, conducting any uh, risk assessment, uh, you will have to segregate which are uh, high critical risk vendors and non-critical risk vendors. Okay. I'll just uh, share a template wherein I have classified the list of, first you need to make a list of all the, uh, I'm giving you an example of a smaller organization. And mm -hmm. then coming to a bigger organization, smaller organization, usually it is a Excel based driven uh, activity. If it's a larger organization, again, it is a tool driven activity, completely a tool driven activity. So I'll start with this uh, smaller template which I have. So these are the list of vendors. First, what you need to do, make a list of vendors, irrespective of the division a mm -hmm. vendor, any external team who is supporting the organization. Mm -hmm. As I initially told, it might be a critical application which they're supporting, HR applications which they're supporting, housekeeping, or it might be a travel portal or person who is taking a courier from you. He's also a person who is supporting our organization where they're carrying confidential information to, okay. to a mail. So all these vendors has to be uh, listed first. So if you see, I have uh, made a note of a couple of uh, vendors here, just mm. not given the names, but just uh, some names which I've shared here. Mm. So maybe, uh, maybe IP phone uh, for Bangalore, mm. and then the data pro processing, which might be your uh, ADP or a tax filing uh, company, okay. and uh, maybe your SSN certificate for your organization. And you would need a licensing uh, for each and every application which you're using, or a backup support, a backup application, or a VMware application. Any of the application you need the license to run this, uh, run any of your uh, uh, technology. So again, uh, coming to the software support, the software which is provided by the external team. And then software also, again, it can be segregated, whether it is the complete uh, software support which they're providing, it's just an API support which they're providing. You will have to segregate based on your requirement. 
and okay. marketing. Yes, marketing also plays a very important role because you're publishing the data, that is the official data, your organization data, which you're putting it on a social media platform. True. So it, it has to be validated and it has to be uh, approved by your management team before you publish anything on the social media platform. True. So how sensitive is your data which you're publishing on the social media platform or on your website? It is not exclusively, it might not be uh, on a social media platform, it might be on your website also what you're publishing. Okay. okay. The service, the service provider links, the links which are coming, whether the links are protected, where it is a clean pipe uh, link. So, for example, the uh, the links which are provided, the service provider which uh, shares the link, for example, ATL, it might be a Vodafone, BSNL mm. line. Where where does the entry point and the exit point happen? Is the data okay. being shared? So all these measures has to be taken. And then office support, where it might be your uh, admin support, or uh, for example, he might be a copy uh, vendor also. He might support with a coffee machine also. It might be connected to the Wi-Fi coffee machine. You don't know because okay. it is a smart kitchen. Uh, entire office will be a smart kitchen system now these days. It, mm. it might be a cleaning staff also. You have your uh, cleaning equipments also, everything. Uh, if I had to talk about the restroom also, it is all uh, smart restrooms which are being used these days. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, it even a small to small vendor also plays a very crucial role. Uh, role in this vendor risk assessment okay okay again coming to travel portal you have uh, you you have your la large number of pi data personal information data which you put on your portal some if it's a larger organization they have the in-house portal which has been uh, created or developed if it is a smaller organization again it is a third party who will take care of your entire travel uh, needs Okay. During that entire travel needs where you will have to give your, if a person is traveling internationally, he might give your uh, uh, passport, uh, give the passport details, other bank, bank statement, so many things which are uh, based on the visa, uh, the local uh, region which you are traveling or the international place which you are traveling. Based on the requirement, the travel agent will collect all the data. Okay. So again, okay. uh, the licensing uh, depend upon multiple uh, vendors. Mm -hmm. For this, you will have to have a backup also. It is not just a single vendor. What if today vendor, uh, uh, a vendor who is supporting you tomorrow, he might uh, uh, not support you. True. There might be many reasons, right? So you will True. have to have multiple vendors to support the same set of activity. True. And then uh, coming to the employee data, uh, HRMS module, uh, in-house development and an external development, yes. Uh, if it is an in-house, yes. How do you secure it? If it is an external, how? where is the data servers have been built? How is the data being transferred from the HR system to the third-party system? How okay. it has been transferred? And what is the timeline of the data which has been hosted on the uh, vendor's uh, 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 service? So there okay. are a couple of questions which I'll run through the questions as well. Okay. okay. And but uh, right now, right now, uh, as I can see that you know you have mentioned this high, medium, and all that. Mm -hmm. So we're going to discuss this also. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. We'll okay. This. Okay. Okay. Hosting service. Uh, again, the hosting uh, might be on AWS, Azure, mm. Google platform. So it depends upon the company's organization requirement. Again, the platform support, a background okay. verification, which is again uh, related to HRMS portal. Background verification, yes. HRMS portal is something different and the background verification is something different. Background okay. verification, which goes from your childhood till date. What all uh, background verification has to be done? Where did you finish your higher education? Where did you finish your college degree? And the previous uh, organization work experience, any testimonials, all those things will be collected. Again, police verification. So now the new one which has been added is the cyber, cyber verification of each and every profile, whether you have an Insta profile, whether you have a Facebook profile, LinkedIn profile, okay. all those things will be verified as part of the background verification. And then finance support. Finance support, yes, in-house tally, if it is uh, tally or any other SAP, yeah, SAP system, uh, whether it is an in-house support or an external support, how crucial is your every point being captured, and then advisory support. This also plays a very, very important role as advisory support. Advisory support might be examples like uh, uh, it might be a legal advisory, it might be a security advisory. Security advisory like uh, uh, KPMG, P, uh, PWC, ENY, these are all supporting as a security service or they can give you a legal advisory also. Uh, okay. Like They might give you an auditing support as well, the external uh, team. 
So okay. uh, when you are sharing all this legal also, you are want to share all the details with them until you share all the MSA, SLA, all those details. They cannot draft the legal uh, document, right? Whether mm -hmm. it is an mm -hmm. NDA or an SLA document, this cannot be drafted by them. So you will have to share it with the legal team. Security, okay. yes, if your security has been outsourced, like a SOC, SIM, uh, is been outsourced to an external agency, yes, <coughs> uh, you will have to see how well uh, you've been uh, doing this and how is the security being monitored, how is okay. the security being handled, how is the data being transferred. I'm just giving the names of this predominant uh, organization, Fine. Uh, just an example of uh, Fine. Okay. So mm -hmm. the, these are some of the uh, vendors which I've captured. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you will have to make a list of everything in the organization, as I mentioned, from critical to the low, lowest of uh, like coffee machine, I told, right? So, okay. so it has to be uh, made a list. Then based on that, I have a reference sheet here. If you go okay. to the previous tab here, here, based on the organization here, these are the standard things, low, medium, high. Mm -hmm. The category would be, or you want to make it uh, another category also based on your organization requirement, you can uh, make it very high also. Okay? okay. Or it can be called as critical. Okay. So okay. it is based on a company risk tolerance level? No, no. This this is about the categorization level. Okay. 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 The uh, value of the risk uh, assigned uh, category, it might be a very critical, high, medium, mm -hmm. or low, or it might be high, medium, and low. Usually, okay. market, uh, usually uh, what still now what I've done is it's only high, medium and low. Because if it is a finance or a health organization, what they do is very critical. Yes, I've seen okay. some of them where they mention it very critical. Okay. Understood. And, the and the values, I will uh, explain the values, how it has been derived. Again, here this is the value. If something is uh, greater than 7 and lesser than 11, then it is considered as low. And these values, okay. it is an organization driven. It is not uh, something that specifically, which has been derived or defined anywhere else. Okay. It is not a hard and fast rule. Okay. So Understood. again, uh, uh, this is just an example, which I, I have uh, written it. Okay. When an organization says that the tolerance level or the criticality level of the information, if it is more than 11 and lesser than 14, then I consider it as medium. If okay. it is more than 14 and uh, lesser than 21, then I consider it as high. Okay. Okay. So these are the categorization level, criticality level of the information which has been stored in house or it has been outsourced. Understood. Okay. So this is especially for the vendor classification which I have done. Okay. So high, medium, and low here. Again, yes. This uh, this is all formula driven. So okay. when we start uh, categorizing it, whether uh, see category of the vendor that has access to the company information and asset i need to ca categorize it whether it is a high medium or a low okay? okay so vendor having no physical access to company facilities uh physical maintenance vendor etc software and hardware supply and then vendor so here my uh, concern is if the vendor is having access to any of my critical data so okay. this ip phone person he has access to the data but it is very medium understood I, and this has been derived again by the organization. This has to be different organization, not okay. by the auditor or not by the team. Management has to decide whether this uh, this set of uh, vendors has to go in a medium, high, or low category. Okay. And then data processing. Yes, of course, it's a tax filing information, which uh, every organization, which is uh, again a PII data, and then it has been considered at high. Okay. Uh, and SSL certificate, it just captured few details. It doesn't capture any critical information. It, yes, it captures the IP address, but not much uh, critical information. It, I, as per my organization, I consider it as medium. If your organization considered it as high, then you can mark it as high. Okay. So this is how I do the categorization. Okay. And I change it as low. As and when I change low, high, medium, I make it as high here. And then I make it as uh, medium. The number, I have uh, written a formula here. So the uh, the vendor criticality rating will change. Understood. Okay. And vendor criticality level also will change. Okay. So this is an Excel-based uh, activity. If your organization is too big where they cannot handle it on Excel, yes, there are a couple of tools in the market which are available. Example. <clears throat> If I have to give you an example of a tool. No, 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 just uh, any example. The service now is there, I believe. Yeah, service now is there. Singlex okay. is there. Then OneTrust, it's okay. Huh? Okay. OneTrust. OneTrust. De okay. Uh, Deloitte also performs the spender risk assessment. 
So there are a couple of uh, market experts hmm. uh, which uh, provide these uh, services. Okay, that's great. So the the checklist that you created, I think mm -hmm. you know, or the the template that we have created, uh, mm -hmm. it required a lot of meeting discussions and all that, you know, um, like you know to understand end to end vendor how it works and uh, their in out process. And based on that only we can able to prepare the checklist. It's not something as high level using some template or taking some benchmark and based on that we can build, right? Correct. Right, 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 right. This is the template which is done with the every vertical stream head has mm. to decide. See, every vertical head will be the in charge of their entire mm. uh, stream. HR, mm. gaya, IT, and then uh, other development team. So mm. they know that how their entire process works, how their entire activity works. So I, okay. can, I, I can say that the person who is rejected in the interview, their documents are uh, not critical for me. But HR might say that, yes, I do store that information, though the person candidate is selected or not selected. I will store that information for a couple of years. Might be there might be a requirement from other team. Might be that guy might be specialized. Then I don't have to do a research on the portal. So I have it ready available. I keep it. For him, HR, uh, it will be very critical. Okay. For, for, for an IT person, it might not be a critical. So we, uh, the, the, the vertical stream head is the person who can decide or who can categorize this. The number mm. value and the categorization value can be decided by the vertical head. Great. Great. Thank you. So what is the next step after that? We're creating this checklist and all the what, what can be the next step? So critical, vendor criticality rating is defined. So for example, the data processing. At hmm. least 15. And then uh, licensing, yes, it is too high. And then employee data, yes, again, it comes to HRM module, uh, HRMS module at a 17. And then platform support. So these are all the critical vendors. Okay. So when there is a critical vendors which are there, so we ensure that how is the data being most. For example, I take an example of tax file. Hmm. Tax records are stored in a third party vendor application. So we need to ensure that how the data is being transferred from our organization to the vendor hmm. portal or the vendor okay. server, server. So if okay. I'm transferring the data, how the data is being secured, whether the hmm. data is being encrypted, if it is an encrypted form of data which you are transferring, what is the terminology or what is the methodology which you are using, not the term, methodology which you are using. It's an uh, encryption AES 256 or it is a secure way which you send it on a hard copy, which you file it and then the vendor will scan it. So these are the things, checkpoint, which you need to ensure that the data is securely transferred to the third party. Okay. Not just transferring to the third party, you're handing over the risk, your risk to the third party, but how well he is securing it. He cannot Fine. leave the server open, right? So what are the uh, measures which he is taking to secure the server? So he has he uh, authorized any uh, dedicated resource to work on our server? Is a multi-factor authentication enabled? Is a biometric enabled for the service which they are working on? What is the retention period of the data which has been stored on the server? Mm. How well do you dispose it? It is not that, okay, fine, today I am resigning the organization. Tomorrow you send a mail to the uh, respective uh, third party saying that please re delete Kavita's record the, from the person. Mm. No. Mm. There is a local policy which they have to avoid. That is why the legal comes in and the local uh, policy. For example, India has its own set of rules saying that you cannot delete the resource record at least for 10 years. Okay. If it is a pharma industry, yes, they have the record saying that you need to keep it for 10 years. If it is financial service, they say that, yes, for India region, keep it for 15 years. Again, it mm. depends upon region to region, how do you secure and dispose it. Mm. So these are the parameters which will be covered as part. So okay. when it comes to the high vendor, so you see that how, uh, then uh, we will have to conduct the same set of, this is a checklist which I have identified that he is a critical vendor for me. But for him, again, I will have to conduct the vendor risk assessment. So okay. it is an, based on the timeline which has been decided in the organization, if it is a high critical vendor, I would suggest to go at every six months to conduct a vendor risk assessment. Okay. So I walk into his platform hmm. or I walk into his data center. I say that, yeah, can they say that they give me a checklist saying that these are the security measures which, fall, which we follow. Okay. Then I say that, okay, you're following these are the parameters which you're following. I will be conducting a vendor risk assessment at your premises. I will be looking at the records, how you are storing, how you are retaining, how you are disposing, all this, then they will have to show me on the live system. So if they fall in, or if they fulfill the category, uh, checklist criteria, it is not only really a checklist, it is just, uh, it is, if they follow the entire uh, criteria, yes, we are satisfied with the assessment. 
then we say that okay though he is under high risk he has yeah. taken all the security measures to secure <coughs> our this is how uh, the, the entire cycle comes yeah so uh, when we talking about the implementation part or so do we create also some kind of a vendor management policy something like that before yes. we setting this kind of a benchmark right right um, any uh, vendor who has been onboarded first is mm. that we do not disclose any of the uh, internal activities which has been done for example i need an api support i don't tell that what exactly i'm looking for i just try to take the details from him whether it is compatible for our uh, setup we look into those parameters and then mm. we sign we sign an nd okay it's a non disclosure agreement which we sign with the vendor okay so any of the transaction which has been happening uh, within uh, this uh, or we can go for a proof of concept also within the proof of concept uh, timeline you will not disclose either it is a uh, customer name or what is the activity which has been happening so he he cannot disclose any of the activities which has been happening within us understood so there is an nda sign mutual nda which has been signed so both the parties have to accept the nda sign each other's nda and then start the activity this is mandatory before onboarding any of the working starting first step is nda and then once you you take a proof of concept simultaneously you can start uh, doing the vendor onboarding okay why do we do this vendor onboarding you might have the next question but i will as a flow i will <laughs> I was out to ask yeah 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 so why do we do this vendor onboarding yes we don't know the background of the vendor what exactly yeah. he is doing how well he is secured all these parameters which i explained we will have to check for each and every vendor i have 100 vendors in my organization yes i will be conducting the same set of activity for 100 vendors as well what what tomorrow is i i will give <clears> him <throat> a checklist saying that can you please fill this checklist and uh, submit it mm. to me along with the nda he mm. will submit submit the checklist and he'll say yes i follow all this parameter but how do you ensure that he follows all those uh, he is on uh, on a daily basis how do you ensure that you cannot keep monitoring uh, whether he is doing a vapt or he is doing a pen testing right so for that sure. we ask them to share the iso 27000 certified if their organization is certified else we ask them to submit the soft to type 2 certificate so that we also have a confidence saying that there is a third party who has done the assessment on the organization yes hmm. the the these people follow all the set of uh, uh, standards <clears throat> Uh, which are required for the to, for the smooth transaction and we rely on those certificate and we onboard them once the onboarding is completed it is always advisable to go for a proof of concept for a couple of days and then once the proof of concept is completely successful then you can uh, uh, the nda which is there it is a proof of concept nda and the activities which are done till date would be a proof of concept then it can be moved as a live setup So okay live nda you can msc can be signed okay that's great and most important thing uh, when when it come to the vendor onboarding processes the minimum criteria they must be compliance with our legal requirements and regulatory on or... Re yes okay. yes that that is Fine. why we ask them to uh, submit the uh, iso 27000 uh, certification because their uh, iso 27000 is an information security standard and then soft to type to, uh, which is more uh, critical uh, audit uh, than iso 27000 against them so if they submit any either one of this then we accept it and we can go ahead understood okay and top of it if there is any other risk like again that risk falls under uh, business okay so once we basically onboard the vendor and uh, we did this assessment like do we follow any kind of a governance process after that or what exactly it is yes for example you are doing the sim the uh, sim activity which has been mm. outsourced okay mm. so there is a continuous monitoring uh, which has to happen your equipments are hosted on the sim or so okay. so the your equipments have been monitored but how do you ensure that the resources are uh, working on these activities yes the, or your or the application which are supporting these activities are working yes there should be a continuous monitoring it's just not a monitoring which has to happen after okay. monitoring you need to look into the weekly report as well 
A report has to be generated on a weekly basis and it has to be submitted to the team. Team will validate again and then submit it to the board of directors or the stakeholders, either both of them, it is vendor and the in-house, both we will uh, submit this uh, reports to the management. Again, it is monthly report, fortnightly report and the uh, yearly report based on the agreement which we have done with the vendor. This monitoring and then reporting has to go in hand in hand. Okay. And then, like, uh, like uh, normally, what is what is basically when you're talking about this reportings? Mm -hmm. uh, as you said, in a six months, we have three months, we have, mm -hmm. and uh, now, if you notice, you know, we onboarding more than fifty hundred vendors, okay, mm -hmm. from the company. How are you able to track, you know, that which vendor is critical and all that? Uh, definitely, the rec the, sh the sheet we are creating, mm -hmm. but sometimes the you know the business is very dynamic, the requirements are very dynamic, you know. Mm -hmm. So in that case, how we basically keep track of this risk and all that? Right. So we have market tools. As I uh, give you some examples of the tool. Uh. Tool will be uh, see as and when you enter the data into the tool, it will. Uh, there are so many parameters. It is not just a couple of parameters. Maybe I can say about hundred parameters which we had set while in, uh, while implementing these tools. Okay. Okay. Uh, so it, it it's like I will be a uh, vendor also will input the data into that. And then uh, uh, our internal organization team also, the business requirement team also will start inputting the data into the tool. So what we do is when we uh, conclude with the solution, then there is a risk rating which occurs. Okay. Right? This is all formula driven. So I show I showed you an Excel uh, table where high, medium, low, which has been categorized. The yeah. same thing will be categorized in the back end in the tool, and it will notify that this is a very high high vendor, this is a medium vendor, this is a low vendor. So okay. based on that, the action will be taken. If it's okay. a smaller organization, it's a say Excel driven. If it's a larger organization, yes, it is completely a tool driven and the inputs which are being provided by the vendor and input input which are being provided by the business team. Understood. So both together to be considered and a value will be derived. Based on the value, we consider whether it is a high value. Okay. Fine. So what is basically the next step after that? Like you can have your water. So vendor will be evaluated and then hmm. vendor will start working and the reports will go on and on. Then hmm. every, uh, based on the timeline, which has been defined internally, we conduct the vendor risk assessment. Hmm. Why do we conduct vendor risk assessment? Okay, he's been onboarded. Why do you have to look back again? He, things are going on smooth. You don't have to look back again, right? That is what everybody knows. That is a wrong practice. Every vendor has to be... Done, uh, audit has to be conducted or an assessment has to be conducted at least yearly once. Okay. Because you don't know today there is a threat which is happening and tomorrow there is something else which is coming in. There are new threats which are coming in like anything. So you will have to ensure that all the threats risk are being mitigated or which has been actioned by the vendor. Mm -hmm. Yes. We will have to do this assessment on an yearly basis so that yearly basis is too long. But as on the categorization, you will have to define the timeline. Based on the timeline, the assessment has to be conducted because there's so many threats which are coming in. So how they, are they planning to mitigate? What are the plans which have been in place or action plans or remediation plans which uh, they have to uh, action? So all these things has to be considered and uh, audit has to be conducted. Okay. And for that also, do we have any kind of a KPI we said that, okay, we have this kind of a tracking, so we need to measure or based on just uh, SOP, we follow the process? No, we do have a checklist for that. We can prepare a checklist or we can see that what is this a type of activity which the vendor is involved in. So okay. as I mentioned in the previous example, if it is a HRM is put, hmm. so again, we, we will, uh, we can make it as a checklist driven because it will be very easy. Uh, every year it is an ongoing activity. So we can <coughs> always go on a checklist driven one. Okay. And uh, so we can see again how how is the data being transferred the same set of activity but the technology keeps changing okay. so the attacks threats which keeps changing so the new threats which have been right then we we add them to this uh, the checklist and see how what is the mitigation plan what is uh, the action which has been uh, taken by the vendor understood so the uh, like you know we we heard about a lot of checklists about this sig and all that. So in which condition we should follow the checklist? Like, as you see, you have created your own checklist of, mm -hmm. uh, so like 
for each and every vendor do we have a set of questionnaires that we prepare or what exactly is that you don't have to basically pre- pre- prepare a checklist for each and every vendor hmm. you can categorize the vendors for example it's an application vendor who is supporting whether it is an api hmm. or a complete set of application which they are preparing hmm. or a- any of the containers which they are preparing or a security hmm. so to, to, to categorize it in such a way that it will be useful for the uh, it makes your work also very simpler so okay. for an application vendor yes these are the set of fact- uh, que- uh, these are the set of questions which i need to ask irrespective of the this is my standard so Understood. today i am there in the organization or not there the checklist will be there in the organization only uh, questions questions will be also new threats which are arising in the market or which are arising in the technology that will be added understood Understood. So, so uh, uh, today uh, for HRMS portal, yes, these are the so you can categorize as a third party uh, where, which hmm. are related to finance hmm. uh, or HR related uh, portals or HR related activities. Yes, IT related, licensing related, everything together, licensing and software together, you can categorize them. Hmm. So, based on the hmm. category, you can pre- uh, create a single checklist so that your work also is reduced and uh, you don't have to m- manage so many checklists. Okay. So as a as a vendor risk assessor what is the primary challenge you know we face in the enterprise yes, there are a lot of challenges which we face uh, uh, the first challenge what we face is uh, like do i really need to fill such a big checklist <laughs> <laughs> so that is that is the first question which comes up Hmm. every vendor it might be i am filling up the checklist then i say are yaar i have so many things in place i have so many security measures in place do you really hmm. think that i need to uh, fill this checklist they can go to my website and check no we have to fill that because it is so do you care yes so that is the biggest challenge which we like okay. they want the vendor to be onboarded as on yesterday but the mm-hmm. uh, checklist will be filled out as on next year okay <laughs> so i agree you know uh, and sometimes there's a lack of support from a stakeholder also there right like you know when we requesting for some informations and right, they are not right. very supportive so, uh, it's more of that it is uh, more of an educative prospect i i would say that they do not hmm. know the what is the threat uh, which they will be falling under if they do not uh, follow this uh, action plan <clears throat> why, mm-hmm. why why we have this entire action vendor risk assessment the entire assessment why we have created this assessment life cycle to ensure that our organization is secure true so application a third party application which has been onboarded to our platform we do not know what is the threat which has been carried by that tomorrow true. he might send a uh, malicious mail saying that please click on this link you will be getting some thousand gift vouchers yes we don't know we do not have that education so we start clicking on that link that same education has to be provided internally and then same has to be educated to the vendor saying that these are the spam messages you should not receive this is how okay we, yeah so we, that is why we as a part of iso 27000 information security uh, awareness training it is hmm. mandatory every half yearly it has to be conducted so that these all points okay. are covered as part of the isms uh, training that's great so that that is actually a mandatory thing so i thought i was an impression we don't conduct the training for vendors but okay so yes, that's we there. have to conduct the training for vendors okay. at least annually once if we do not uh, okay see uh, there are so many tools now for conducting the training also so what we hmm. can do is we can actually share the link saying that uh, hmm. these are the trainings which you will have to follow or which, hmm. which you will have to complete before onboarding or okay. annually once you will have to the contract has to be uh, renewed annually along with the contract share this one simple link with the vendor so that they can uh, look at the video recordings and then mm. they follow the criteria or the checklist which is being as mm. part of the video training material and they can ac- accept the, and acknowledge it. so question is you know how to create this checklist how to create the uh, the checklist is a quite challenging one you will have mm. to uh, any tips for the... our subscribers <laughs> students yes yes so what is it ta- what is that you are looking from the vendor example like cloud is there yeah uh, so if you have to set up a cloud on your environment well, so the no i want to host my data on the cloud i mean i'm going you, to use when, AWS when, azure yeah you when you want to host the data on the cloud mm-hmm. so what type of data which you will be hosting on the cloud yeah pi data yeah. is there yeah PI okay data. now understood okay 
So first yeah, we yeah. need to have a meeting with business, understand the requirement that we can't be part of a checklist because that is something is minimum thing we need in the cloud. Right. And then try understand type of data, how you going right. to process the data. Right. Okay. So oh, the che- che- checklist will be based on what action are you looking for. Say when you told okay. BI data, yes, BI data, dal do cloud pe. No, BI <laughs> data also it is again segregated whether it's <clears throat> high, high critical or medium. Mm. BI data, the sensitive data, passport number is very highly sensitive data. Mm. So mm. you you have to segregate it data, uh, and then see whether it has to be uh, in house data, it has to be stored, or it is an on cloud or a public cloud which you have to mm. store. So the classification has to be done there, and then high, medium, low has to be categorized. Then based mm. on that, the data will be transferred. So whatever I initially mentioned, like it has to be uh, encrypted. Mm. Which data has to be encrypted? If mm. you are transferring the data, it is through FTP which you have to do, or just mm. uh, you need a you need a connectivity, secure connection w- between two servers when the mm. data is pushed. So these are all the uh, things. What action are you performing? Okay. While installing uh, the basic thing, the, the simple thing is when you are posting on a cloud, what mm. action do you perform? First step, what do you perform? Second step, what do you perform? Third step, what do you perform? Convert that into a, a checklist. Understood. Okay. And then once everything is installed, then for, uh, make that as like, okay, have you done this? Have you done this? Have you done this? Okay, done. Mm. Yes. All these actions are being performed. Great. So, uh, Havita, is it possible for you to give a quick summary, you know? Uh, as we understood that, that the information was in a more like a cubicle order. So in a layman term, okay, what you said about, you know, policies required. So from ground, from from zero, mm-hmm. if someone joined the organization mm-hmm. and he want to start, he's a first person or she's a first person who want to initiate this governance, which is called vendor risk management. Mm-hmm. What is the first step mm-hmm. and what is the last step on a very high level? Okay. First step would be, uh, you will have to look into the, uh, for how many vendors are supporting you. And uh, in this case, like, you know, they have not onboarded any vendor. They are planning to onboard. That's why they have built this department, which is called as a vendor risk management. Mm-hmm. If they have not onboarded any vendor, if it is mm-hmm. completely a new setup, you will have to look into it. How many type of vendors you want to onboard in the Great. Okay. Once you identify the type of vendors which you will be onboarding in the organization, then mm. you can segregate them. Application, HR, IT, mm. uh, admin support staff. These okay. are the segregations which you do. And then what are the vendors which you uh, which uh, will be supporting you? For example, if I say infrastructure, yes, mm. router switches, firewalls, mm. and then your endpoint, mobile devices, mm. yes. For every uh, infrastructure, you will need a backup. So who will be your primary contact and who will be your secondary person? Who will be okay. supporting here? Then comes to the actual vendor who will be you have finalized those vendors. But do we do we do do? But you don't think so? We, we we should also need to create some kind of a policies because that is a foundation for any vendor management system and all that. Yes, we do. See, whatever it has been action, whatever you have mm-hmm. been performing, mm-hmm. those comes as a policy. Whatever it is, first you will write the uh, policy and mm-hmm. then the procedure and then the same will be documented and executed. Okay, fine. So once we basically onboard the vendor and uh, we do the vendor risk assessment of that, and uh, we basically share the gaps, what we have discovered uh, with the vendor. Right. And uh, once we done with that, okay, we got an evidence. We basically close the gap and now vendor is successfully onboarded. Right. Okay, if vendor is critical, we do the assessment depending upon the policy, the frequency of the assessment. And that is how the entire closure happened, right? Right, right. Okay. So if someone want to make a career in a GRC or vendor risk assessment, what do you think? What is a most important resource the person need to require to, you know, get this thing and all that? Yes. This is a wide uh, area which I can see. Mm-hmm. So there are a couple of certifications which may go. Uh, see, rather than getting into certification, it's more on hands on experience. More on getting educated, like how how things work, how this life cycle works. Better try to understand this how this life cycle works, how well you can manage things, than directly jumping into any of the certification. Yes, once you understand the structure of it, how the entire cycle works, then I would suggest you to go for any of the better Okay. So, do you have any uh, uh, other templates to discuss? Yes, yes. I, I was yeah. about to show you that template. Yeah. For you. Share with me. I have a last one more template to show you. Yeah. Uh, the template is uh, risk assessment. How do you conduct the risk assessment? Uh, that was uh, many, yeah, that yeah. was something missing. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you treat that risk? So you have identified the risk and how do you treat that risk? Sharing mm. my screen. I've just taken a 
HR department. Okay. Mm. So the template would be like uh, it's a cover page wherein you provide your uh, uh, what what is this uh, document all about and the version mm. control and then the document document information. So I call it as uh, information security risk assessment. Some people some in some organization they make risk assessment as uh, one single. Uh, template and then treatment report as another one okay okay but here i have uh, tried to customize it wherein it is only one uh, security risk assessment and the treatment report okay introduction about the organization and again yes here is the very crucial part uh, see as i mentioned uh, earlier uh, the confidentiality mm. level okay okay it's very, very so we, we, we categorize into three all the three you know confidentiality impact integrity impact so do we need to create a reference sheet for all the three okay yeah. yes yes okay yes, yes, okay so confidentiality again it depends mm. upon your organization how you want mm. to categorize it so mm. it is again confidentiality integrity and then mm. availability okay, okay. And then a formula driven uh, mm. based on your acceptance level, and then the likelihood score, and mm. then uh, the risk levels also. So my this question here is that uh, when it comes to, uh, can you just scroll down actually, mm -hmm. Abita? Mm -hmm. yeah, when we're talking about the slab level, which is called criticality value, when you say negligible, low, medium, high, very, mm -hmm. it is basically a uh, impact rating, right? Right, right. It's an impact. Uh, rating. So how we how we basically calculate this impact rating, like you no know, less than two or less than four or four point five or less, more, higher than seven. Yeah. How we uh, basically de define this uh, this rating? Yeah. Yeah. Here I have already given the rating. For me, this ten uh, is hmm. uh, medium. So hmm. fifteen is critical. So okay. the reference sheet which it says is anything which is more than seven or hmm. uh, less than eleven is low for me, and hmm. anything uh, more than eleven and fourteen is medium. And anything more than 14 and uh, less than 21 is high. Okay. So this is how it has been categorized here also. Okay. So anything, uh, it's like uh, see, a coffee machine which is not connected to any of your, uh, it's not a smart kitchen coffee machine, it's just True. connected to a PowerPoint. So mm. that that will be uh, a negligible one. Okay. okay. Understood. So, so we have the rating one. Okay. Uh, yeah. A uh, very very critical would be your PIA information. Or, very high. Uh, very high. Your the data which has been processing the same data or the logs which has been collected. All this will fall under very high category. But Kavita, question is when when you say CIA is there, confidentiality, integrity, availability there. Okay, mm -hmm. and when I say PI data is primarily focus on the confidentiality. Mm -hmm. right. So when we going for this likelihood rating, okay, how we consider the likelihood rating? So are we considering only one aspect which is the confidentiality, and according to that we have rate them five or because in, there's no mm -hmm. issue involved of availability, right? Because it is completely opposite of that. Right. I don't want the my SPI information available to everyone. Right, right. Because if it so, it's, it basically goes to another party, then it is a concern. So how you basically you know? Yeah, I'll show you the risk assessment sheet. Then you will have to know. So okay. I'm uh, just taking an example of the function of P and D. Okay. Hmm. So here I have the information rating as information rating, which is again confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Uh, okay. I have considered it as a processing uh, processing rating, processing criticality value. I have considered processing criticality level. Okay. Okay. Processing processing criticality rating also again. Okay. Who will be the process owner? Processing uh, information again. This is a standard. I can uh, uh, mention it for any standard. It is twenty seven. the critical data and then the likelihood score and the risk so data. can't hear you yeah can you hear me yeah now i can hear you go ahead okay so these are the standards and then the impact score impact okay. score would be uh, cia value and the mm. processing criticality rating and mm. then comes to the likelihood score how many okay. times it occurs and the risk order and the risk mm. value what would be the value of the risk so how you calculate the impacted impact score here the impact score uh, again i here is the likelihood score mm. and then I think this is the overall one yeah, yeah it's the overall one and okay. this is the process criticality value and mm. this mm. is the likelihood mm. score risk value and the risk level and the risk rating sure. okay and this is how it has been just, and then I say resource planning, candidate interview, salary mm. negotiation. Mm. So these Process are the yeah, acceptance letter and mm. then induction process. All this, every step will be captured here. And then mm. how is the data being uh, sent to the candidate? How is the data being received from the candidate? Okay, okay. example for for example, it is being sent via email. The information which has been shared via email, the confidentiality is one. 
and the mm. integrity is four and the availability is one. Again, okay. this is uh, just a numbers uh, sample I have given. Depends upon the organization. I might consider the email which is sent out. Uh, it it will be uh, confidential. It might not be a confidential one. Mm. For me, job description, yes, it is not so much confidential. Mm. Okay. Email, for example, uh, the approval email which I have sent also, it might not be a confidential one. The CEO approval, yes, I think it is a confidential one. So based on this, uh, this is a formula driven which I have written. Okay. Based on this, the scoring. Okay. Again, the process ratings will be arrived here and the process criticality value which arrives automatically. Okay. okay. And this this is not just a formula driven. Here again, if you look back to the reference sheet, so hmm. the reference will again uh, come back with the, it, it, this will be derived after discussing with your management team, how you want to define your uh, scoring. Hello. Hello. Fine. Yeah. Yeah, I'm audible. Yeah, yeah, you're all right. Again, it depends upon after discussing with your uh, management how you want mm -hmm. to derive on these numbers, and based on that, the numbers will be derived here. Okay, okay. it's just not it's just not the risk assessment which we will be conducting. So there will be a risk uh, timeline also. Once the risk assessment is conducted, I will mention the timeline here, and based on the timeline, uh, the audit internal auditor or the respective SPOC will follow with the respective team. Ensuring that they have uh, worked action upon the risk which has been highlighted. Okay. Mm. Then I will do the risk assessment again. What is the revised uh, likelihood score? Revised risk rating, revised risk levels. Okay. And what is the residual risk which has been a uh, remaining risk which is there? And what is the action plan which management has to take on this residual risk? Okay. This is how is the template complete template risk uh, assessment and the risk treatment template. Okay, so how do you define the residual risk in the in the in the in, you know when you're dealing with this assessment and all that? Yes, I have uh, considered, uh, for example, if I have to say about the HR team, yes, I have uh, transferred the entire data uh, for my third party uh, server. Yes, there is a risk in it. So the residual risk is. Um, the data is not in my control. The data is in third party control. So what I do is the residual risk is there. Uh, the, the residual risk is like, it's not, I don't consider it as a residual risk, but there is a huge risk. So what I do is again, I take uh, insurance for it. The, the okay. data which has been stored on a third party uh, system, I take uh, insurance for it. So what I do okay. is I keep the data in third party uh, vendor uh, portal and then take a risk um, insurance. For it and so I have transferred the risk to third person. Okay, so that was a really great insight, Kavita, and uh, especially the I really like that Excel sheet. Okay, mm -hmm. so so do, do you have any value? Uh, you know, do you have any uh, closing uh, summary for this particular session for a subscriber about vendor risk assessment and all that? So this is a quite vast area vendor risk assessment. Just a 30 minute session is this. So if anybody has any questions, they can reach out to me. Personally, sure, sure, help, sure. Yeah, they, I can help them out. Well, uh, two things I would like to share here. One is basically the two, two templates that you have shown. Normally what mm -hmm. happens, people do sessions based on a PPT and all that, but this is pure hands-on practical. And right, right. so I truly appreciate the time that you have taken to build these templates and all that. And... Uh, that is the reason is, you know, I approach you again for the one more session. <laughs> and I'm okay, sure, you know, after so. seeing these videos, uh, do let us know, team. Uh, how do you find yeah, sure. the session and uh, how can we disturb again, Kavita, for the next topic? Okay. Right, right. So she <laughs> has uh, always limited time. She is a busy lady, but we'll take out the time from her schedule and we'll make sure we can able to generate more content. We can able to give the, you know, new content which can create more values in your life. So thanks, thanks, Kavita. And um, this is I've really tried amazing. To share, I've tried yeah. to share as much as possible. In 30-minute session, I try to show some <clears throat> templates. Hmm. And I try to give you examples with the layman term. So if you, if in case anybody has any more questions, they can reach out. They to can reach out to Kavita and I will share yeah. also the LinkedIn profile. No LinkedIn issues. Profile, yes. Yeah. Yes, it can be done. And, and as she much also, as possible, I try to share my No, I, I truly understand. I truly understand. And that's why, you know, I had, a, I think, 60% visibility on the topic. But after seeing the template, you know, how it creates, that gave me a better visibility about how to do this assessment. Yeah. 
thanks thanks and one more last before going to discuss before we wrap up the session I, when i see the risk assessment sheet and all that we don't have any description about risk we don't have any description or thread like is it required or it's not required it it is required it should be mentioned in our policy and procedure document okay so the policy and procedure document captures all those things uh, so hmm. uh, it's a gist of it i i can show you or share the template again hmm. here when i say about the cover page uh, it, it talks about what is this uh, tracker all about on the, what is the session mm, about mm, and mm. the document control which gives me the entire details about what is this document all about who is approved and who is managing it who is written it and the document id and the version is here and induction wherein it says that uh, it, it is more about uh, what is this document uh, all about the actions or uh, mm. who will be the spark of this who is the custodian of this what what is actually reference of this all those details are captured in this introduction just this is just a gist of it because the entire thing will be captured as part of your policy and procedure document okay so how how was your entire vendor risk assessment done it will be part of your policy and procedure vendor risk assessment policy vendor risk assessment procedure okay each and every action whatever i described now it will be part of that document or uh, it depends upon the organization whether they want to manage a single document they can uh, instead of a, a reference a document or an overview they can uh, introduction they can add it to the same document excellent thanks 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 kavita thank you so much uh, you know for this particular session and i'm sure it basically have a great value and uh, so can we disturb you again for the next yeah, video yes, series yes yes sure 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 <laughs> any any time any time i am happy to share my knowledge <laughs> that's that's great so this is all team and uh, i'm sure you know this session you find useful and if you find useful do share your suggestions do share your comments uh, your feedback on the comment section so by this we can able to improve the session for me this was eye opening session i had a different assumption about vendor risk assessment and thanks to kavita she basically gave me a, some idea about the areas which i found you know my areas of weak and thanks again and, and the knowledge is basically free you need to pay for the attention that is most important principle we follow and if you have not yet to subscribe to the channel do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss the future videos with the same expert okay we are planning more videos with kavita we are going to disturb lot kavita this year and we'll be doing more and more content thanks thanks team thank you so much thank you thank you everybody